Hi folks, my name is Ian Escherwood. I'm a historian at Gettysburg College and I work on the First World War letters of H.J.C. Pierce or the Jack Pierce Project. What I want to do is walk you through our site and show you some of the unique features we have and how you could use our site for some of your own research. If you go to our website, which is www.jackpeers, that's P-E-I-R-S dot org, what you'll end up seeing is a homepage right here in which it explains kind of what our project does, and it also shows you a photo of uh, Jack Peers from 1915. If you scroll down, you get our Twitter feed here. Uh, we tweet at Jack Peers. Uh, you'll also see a word cloud of some of the more commonly used expressions within Pierce's letters, uh, as well as some recent letters here that you can click to and read. If you go to the letters section of our site, what you'll see is Pierce's letters themselves, which are here in a uh, navigation bar over here. Um, but we also have commentary, more recent commentary or letters that we put on the site goes kind of on the main page here. And so what we have here is a review of the film 1917. So if you saw it, you can read our commentary and our team's review on that film. What you can do is if you're interested in doing research on the First World War, you could type in a particular topic that you're interested in. So if you're interested in like shell shock or aeroplanes or um, artillery or something like that, you can you can type that in here. If you're interested in a particular uh, range of dates in which you'd like to look at, you can use the navigation bar here to look through some of Pierce's letters. And again, he wrote almost 300 of these letters, so that's a considerable amount of letters for you to go through. Or you can search by a specific date. So if we're going to do that, I'll just pick the 21st of April. And we have on the 21st of April, 1917, Piers is writing home to his sister here, uh, writing his sister uh, from, uh, from the Western Front. You have the actual letter here, so it shows you the type of paper that he's writing on, as well as uh, he's writing it in ink. And then you have a transcription here that uh, is a little more readable for you, so you can see what Piers is interested in and what he's getting up to on the Western Front, what his men are getting up to on the Western Front as well. We have a couple other features here that I just want to point out. Uh, we have uh, the biographies and a family tree of the Piers family, so you can understand uh, who he's writing to. We have our blog feature here, so you can read commentary by our team. And we also have map features, uh, which can show you some of the specific engagements that Piers and the 8th Queens are in, as well as walk you through what the experience of a battalion in the line is actually like in 1917 and 1918. Just to give you a couple examples here, the 8th Queens, their first major engagement that they were, were in were, was the Battle of Luz, and we have this wonderful map that was created by our research assistant, Ben Roy, uh, which walks you through, in kind of a story map form, uh, what happens to the 8th Queens at the Battle of Luz in 1915. If you're interested in what a battalion uh, does on the Western Front, how it moves on the Western Front between going up to the front line trenches or support trenches or into reserve, then you can look at one of the maps in which Amy Lucadamo has done on our site, uh, moving that shows you the movement of the 8th Queens on the Western Front. It uses a modern uh, map of France, but then shows you how the battalion is moving up and back from front lines to reserve positions and then into training positions throughout 1917. You can get a real feel for the life of a battalion by looking at this map feature. We also have two other map features. One is a uh, satellite image of France that we have overlaid. This was done by R.C. Meisler, um, our kind of technical mastermind. He has overlaid two maps on top of a satellite image of France. Uh, that center around the village of Le Verdier. This is where Piers and his men defended this village for 22 hours between March 21st and March 22nd, 1918. And what you can get a feel for is their positions here. So these are trench lines here uh, and forts that are within, within the village. These are their advance posts here. Uh, the Germans are over, over here. But you can get a real feel for what the Western Front looks like from, from this map and what this engagement looks like. RC also put together a fascinating story map of this engagement. So you can follow along on the map and you can follow along here with primary sources, uh, both excerpts from the war diary as well as photographs 
you can follow along a, a specific timeline and see what's happening within this battle. So I just wanted to walk you through some of the unique features that we have here on the Peer site. We hope that you can use it and that you can explore the site and that you can learn more about not only Peers and the men of his battalion, but learn more about fighting in the First World War on the Western Front. Thank you.